Game two of our Illinois Tech lacrosse doubleheader getting set to begin here at Stewart Field on the near south side of Chicago, Illinois. The two and six Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawks get set to play host to the winless Wisconsin Stevens Point Pointers. Here with my partner, Eric Willowite, I'm Chris Rouse. And for you just joining us here earlier today, the Illinois Tech men's lacrosse team with a one goal win over Benedictine 11 10, thanks to the game winning goal from Diego Sosa. So, the Scarlet Hawks women's lacrosse team looking to complete a sweep here at Stewart Field as they take on the Wisconsin Stevens Point Pointers. Wisconsin Stevens Point, this is the inaugural season of their women's lacrosse program, and they tabbed Christian Diaz as their first coach in program history. So, clearly, in his first season, Christian Diaz is going to send out this pointers roster looking to get their first win. Here are the starting lineups. First, number four, Paige Allen. Number eight, Dylan Wall. Number 10, Allison Talir. Number 12, Maddie Metzler. Number 13, Alyssa Yoakum. Number 17, Ruby Karras. Number 19, Marissa Van Dyke. Number 20, Sandra Nicholas. Number 22 is the goalkeeper, Emily Gray, Emily Greege. And also number 23, Courtney Leasing, along with number 24, Abby Ron and number 26, Lina Berthew. Meanwhile, for the Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawks, we mentioned they're looking to get their third win of the season. They'll come out 
in their white uniforms, led by head coach Kirk Lamity. And here are the starters. Here's who we have in net first. It'll be number 21, Caitlin Davitt. And in the field will be number one, Iona Pettigrew. Number two, Maya Huddleston. Number three, Shree Mayer. Number four, Kelly Hitchcock. Number nine, Grace Recamp. Number 10, Izzy Niebler. Number 13, Faith Bush. Number 16, Maritza Torres. Number 18, Nicole Cabezas. Number 20, Mercy Godfrey. And number 22, Antonia Tony Martinez. We've got the opening draw control. And action beginning on the south side of the field with Martinez for the Scarlet Hawks. Antonia Martinez spinning towards the net. The shot and the goal. And a quick strike for the Scarlet Hawks. Literally 30 seconds in when the ball went through the net. 1-0 Antonia Martinez. Yeah, let's see if we got a look at that one on the replay here, Chris. As Martinez doing a great individual effort there. Spinning around, firing it, and getting the early goal. Hawks go up 1-0 here. Just 37 seconds in. And a quick strike there for Illinois Tech. Just a quick spin to the net. And a goal. Antonio Martinez opens the scoring on the women's side of things for the Scarlet Hawks. And for Martinez, that goal was her 33rd of the season. 33 goals for Martinez this season is good for second on the team behind Kelly Hitchcock, who has 39. We have a couple of milestones that may be reached in this game, Chris. Uh, Faith Bush, four points away from 100 points in her career. And Kelly Hitchcock, six goals away from 100 goals. Mm. So that's her 45th goal of the season would be her 100th career goal. Here's Martinez, who's trying to close in on her season lead. And Martinez, who just got her 33rd goal of the season, turned back this time by Emily Grieg. Grieg's the old... Greg, the goalkeeper of this Wisconsin Stephen Point team. First year player out of St. Louis, Missouri. Westminster Christian Academy. They got a mix of uh, first year players, some seniors on this squad too. So anytime you're starting a program anew, you're going to have that mix here. And uh, Pointer's looking to get on the board 0 and 4 so far in the season. That was Courtney Lysing, number 23, who had it out top. And you're right about that, Eric. Once again, first year of a program, so you don't really know what to expect. I mean, it's literally a clean slate. You don't know any of the talent. The coach doesn't have a relationship with any of the players except for, hey, I can recruit you to this school. And now they're finally getting an opportunity to put this program in motion as they try to start something in Stevens Point. Yeah, turnover there. Hawks did a good job coming up with that ground ball. They got it over to Caitlin Davitt, but then the pass trying to reach Maya Huddleston on the far side goes out of bounds. Wisconsin Stevens point. Here's Lysing again. Lysing, a junior out of Maple Grove, Minnesota. And if you notice, Chris, Maya Huddleston now back on the decor for this match. Here's a shot for Wisconsin Stevens point. And right on cue, Eric, there's Huddleston <laughs> with the pickup. I love when the players make us look good. That's right. <laughs> no matter what sport it is. Well, I they love, have to work very hard it. to make me look good, So, but that's all right. <laughs> here's Faith Bush. On a milestone watch for points in her career, as Eric mentioned earlier, needing four to get to 100 in her career. Caitlin, recording. And now for the Scarlet Hawks, they push it on the outside of the pitch with Martinez, who was actually coming to the ball there, but did not gain possession. Could help defense over the top there for Wisconsin Stevens Point. Martinez has been in possession the majority of the match thus far. She passes off. She was looking for Bush. Pass goes wide. And, and that one just goes behind yeah. Torres. There's oh. that wind. 10 mile per hour winds. They're going directly north. They were northwest, which meant they were crosswinds for the men's match. They're going to go all over the place as they usually do. We're, we're well conditioned for these conditions, Chris. <laughs> you and I have worked many a game up here. Whether it be soccer, whether it be lacrosse. Oh, we're ready. Here's Martinez for the goal, and she finds the back of the net. Wisconsin Stevens Point having a hard time getting ready for Antonia Martinez. Two quick goals. We haven't even played four minutes. Yeah, that was a nice, another nice individual effort by Martinez, firing that one up high, getting it past Grieg. 2 0 for the Hawks. Just a good read there by Martinez. And Emily Grieg, the first year keeper for Wisconsin Stevens Point. And I, I, you have to think for a goalkeeper, 
in your first season, not only you are for, you're a first year player, but this is the first year of a program. This is certainly going to just be an all around learning experience for Greek in terms of being in the net. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, and for the whole team as well. So, uh, you know, Coach Diaz trying to get familiar with their team. They're only five games in. This is only their fifth game, so there's still a lot of learning going on. There's a chance to go for goal, and it's scored again by the Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawks. They're just jumping on them early here on a Saturday afternoon. That Kelly Hitchcock find in the back of the net. Yeah, Kelly Hitchcock, again, there's one of those six goals she's looking for to get the 100-goal mark at 11.06, unassisted. Hitchcock now with 40 on the season. And Kelly Hitchcock... And the Scarlet Hawks already up 3-0. And once again, already up 3-0. We haven't even played a full four minutes, Eric. Looks like the Scarlet Hawks may be trying to pour this one on early. Yeah, I mean, they've been on the other end of these things. Uh, even, you know, recently they, they've had that experience. It's it's tough. It's tough being on the end of a, of a lopsided score like that. But still got to play the game. And Hitchcock comes away with it for the Scarlet Hawks as we resume this game. And Kelly coming in number four in the nation in draw controls in Division Three, so uh, tops in the knack and number four nationally for draw controls. And, and it's interesting sometimes when I watch the women's team, and this is actually the first time I've seen the women after the men. It's usually vice versa. That's something that the men really could use a, a consistent hand on the draw controls. And here's Martinez who goes for goal in a save. Nice save there by Grieg. but yeah, that's that's something. That Kelly does, and I'm always amazed. This is only her second year of collegiate yeah. uh, lacrosse. You know, her first two years she didn't play. She plays on the women's soccer team, and she's a decorated player there. Nice shot for Pettigrew and a save wow. again by Greig. Now that's a talented keeper. Even Coach Kirk Lamity had to jump up and down for that one. Yeah, that was right <laughs> on the doorstep. Pettigrew had a chance there, but uh, Greig coming up with a nice couple saves there, and now Stevens Point gets the clear. At the collegiate level, what's something I like about the first-year head coach with a freshman keeper, you know, it's like you're starting to new. Is this is how I want to build my program as long as I'm going to be at the helm, and that's what Diaz has done with Greig. Aaron pass there. We'll see who gains possession. It's going to go. Should be Stevens' point as they try to hold on on the end here. It's Talir. Yeah. Allison Talir comes away with it. Here's Marissa Van Dyke, first-year player out of Green Bay, Wisconsin, home of Jordan Love. <laughs> it's got Stevens point. Ball stolen away by the Scarlet Hawks. is Hitchcock. Got a lot of sports going on. Actually, the White Sox and Tigers within eye view of us right now. Tied yeah. at six in the sixth. <laughs> They've got a game going on over there. Here's to Martinez. To the net. Martinez, nice spin move on the dodge, but unable to fire the shot. Yeah, she was – and then – Peeled off, looked at Pettigrew for a moment, just didn't have a clean outlet. They'll set it back up top. Right now, Illinois Tech, time to, with an opportunity to settle down and run the play out. You can hear Kirk Lamity probably in our background yelling out the play. He's shouting traffic at Bush. Bush's pass goes for Martinez, but instead it goes wide of Martinez, scooped back up by Mayer. Shree Mayer had it for a moment. And now Martinez comes up with it for the Scarlet Hawks. That was good position, uh, persistence there by Dylan Wall. Just wasn't able to come up with the ball on the finish. Martinez trying to get to the net. Cut off by Berthume. Underhand shot and a goal! Kelly Hitchcock working on that milestone, Eric. On that feed from Martinez, just a low shot. Fires it past Grieg. And her second goal of the match. 41st of the season for Hitchcock. Scarlet Hawks already up 4 nothing, And number four gives them goal number four this afternoon. She has two of the four on the board. Wisconsin Stevens Point still just trying to figure out the motion of this game, trying to get, find the flow of this match. They've been on defense the majority. Yeah, and then you have Hitchcock in the draw control there going up against Courtney Leasing. Hitchcock just so proficient in the circle. And they're going to say violation on Tech that time. So that's one way to win the draw. So with a favor of Wisconsin Stevens point. So Lysing with the ball now. Lysing 
Good size for Lysing, too. Goes for the shot. Saved by Caitlin Davitt. First time she's been challenged this afternoon. Davitt for Martinez. Oh, that would have been clean. Martinez had nothing but space. Instead, Martinez is dispossessed of the ball, finding herself surrounded by purple uniforms. That was a nice job by Alyssa Yoakum. She caused the turnover, and then she gets the ground ball as well. So nice job, 13 in purple. And she gets the turnover and the ground ball. And she sets up Van Dyke, who... Walks it in for the pointers as they get closer to the net. Lysing back outside to Paige Allen. Allen out of Maple Grove, Minnesota, just like Lysing. Here's Lysing in the traffic, literally just turned right into defense to the defenders and a whistle. Uh, looks like they're going to get a free position shot for Lysing. So that's exactly what it would be, a free position opportunity foul on Isabel Izzy Niebler. Yeah, it could have gone Niebler or Recamp on that one. Lysing shot looked like it may have been deflected by the Scarlet Hawks, and it would belong to the Scarlet Hawks because it was deflected. It was not a <laughs> shot attempt. Remember, a shot attempt with a gate, you know, that, that negates right. everybody to the back line. That means it's a loose ball, and now here's Huddleston. Huddleston just running right towards the end line and literally oh, just wow. lost it, did everything right except when she turned her back to try to find her next move, she just lost the ball. Talaire, good persistence there, causing the turnover before the Hawks could get the clear attempt. So a couple nice defensive plays here by Wisconsin Stevens Point. Here's Van Dyke to the net, and a goal! Marissa Van Dyke, the first-year player from Green Bay, Wisconsin. How many times does Green Bay score in Chicago? <laughs> Too, too many way to, too many, right? Yeah, way too many to mention. <laughs> but we'll we'll give her the goal here. But the Wisconsin Stevens Point pointer, Marissa Van Dyke, gets purple and gold on the board. They trail 4-1, but something to, for Christian Diaz to build off of with his team. The first year head coach with his first year program. Record of 0-4 entering today's action for the pointers. But they get on the board here in the first quarter. Against the Scarlet Hawks with 6.28 remaining. Yeah, and, and again, coming off a couple nice defensive plays by the pointers, the, the second one setting up that opportunity for Van Dyke to get the goal, cutting their deficit to three. Hitchcock on the draw control, and back to what we talked about earlier, Eric. Yeah. Is that consistency on the draw control, allowing the Scarlet Hawks to win the possession without having to work defensively. Yeah, I'm not sure if I finished my thought, but again, she's been a four-year starter, three-year starter in women's soccer. She just started playing lacrosse collegiately last year. Now, she played it in high school. She actually played it on a state championship team in Arizona, but her first two years in college, she did not play lacrosse, but uh, she... She picked up right where she left off in high school, <laughs> without a doubt. And now she's only four goals away from 100 in less than two full seasons. Right. Sounds like it's just like riding a bike when it comes yeah. from Kelly Hitchcock. Yeah. I mean, she's right a heck of an athlete. You know, she's very good in soccer and obviously very good in lacrosse as well. So, um, you know, Scarlet Hawks lucky to have four in white. Here's David in possession. One thing I have noticed since I've been doing lacrosse, which has been about six six years as of late, is that you do see a lot of, especially when with new pro, newer programs, you'll see women's soccer players cross over to play lacrosse. There's something just about getting on that field and getting outdoors, even though it's a different game, but you're still on the field. Yeah, you get a little mix here. Uh, not as many as they had last season, but uh, I think Coach Shane kind of patrolling a little bit of yeah. that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, um, and then uh, actually Grace Recamp from the women's volleyball team also playing defense for the Scarlet Hawks as well so it's not just limited to women's soccer exactly that, that's not just a here thing I've seen that down the road at U Chicago they'll have a lot of yeah. two sports soccer yep. lacrosse players as well on the women's side yeah yeah it does seem to translate very yeah. well and it's a it's a great sport to keep up conditioning with for sure yeah certainly nothing but running non-stop running yeah. <laughs> in lacrosse yeah he is Martinez Martinez being forced away from the net by the pointer's defense. But Martinez, not to be detered, finds wow. the back of the net anyway. <laughs> Antonia Martinez. Tony makes it 5-1 Scarlet Hawks. You, you're not kidding there, Chris. I mean, that, that was determination. She was determined to get that shot off, and she's rewarded for it. Illinois Tech rewarded with a four-goal advantage here against the Wisconsin Stevens Point team who just can't really seem to get the flow of this match. They got a quick goal 
on the other end from Van Dyke. But for the majority of this match, the pointers have been on their heels against the Scarlet Hawks. Hat trick for Martinez, unassisted. And the Scarlet Hawks by four here in the first quarter at 5 1. This is also one of the few matches where you will see Illinois Tech taking on a team that also has about the same amount of members on the bench as they do. Illinois yeah, Tech. I was just looking at that over there. Yeah, both teams only about, well, three for Wisconsin Stevens Point, but only two for Illinois Tech dressed. Yeah. Uh, you have, right, you have uh, Theodora Prosiliakis. She's not dressed today. She had played in a few matches, but now she's uh, back. Meanwhile, not action, playing. action resumes. Bush, nice feed inside for Hitchcock. And good job for the scoop up by Wisconsin. Stevens Point, that was Greed. Great read by your keeper, a young first-year keeper out of St. Louis, Missouri, Emily Greed. Yeah, so it's only one player, one active player on the bench for the Scarlet Hawks, and it looks like two. Or two not dressed. For the pointers. Yeah. I'm sorry. And it's, and it's weird. Both teams have two not dressed. Two right, dressed, right. two not for Wisconsin. Yeah. One, and then two not for Illinois Tech. Yeah. So here is Martinez working towards the net. Contact from Lysing. Plenty of time to set it up for Hitchcock. Oh, Hitchcock, may, I thought maybe she negated her shot by cutting oh. the wrong way. That one cut left maybe slowed her down. If she would have went right initially, probably would have scored. That's so close. Scarlet Hawks maintain possession on the back line. Oh, Martin no. Ooh. Got whacked on the head there. Late whistle. Very late. Martinez clearly slashed into contact across the top of the head. Yeah, that's dangerous. So we're going to have – should have been a card. And they're going to bring – Berthume off. It looked like Berthume was going to come off the field. Oh, there, I think there, yeah, there is a card. So a card, it was a yellow card on 26. So, yeah, that will be Berthume who picks up the card on the penalty. So, yeah. Illinois Tech in behind the cage here with 248 remaining in the first quarter. Yeah, so anytime you're going to have a hit the, near the head there, that's, you know, that's going to be a card for sure. And here's an opportunity to go to Hitchcock, the shot, and a goal! Kelly Hitchcock. Nice setup off the free position shot there. And it's now 6-1 Illinois Tech. Berthium can come back on, but it comes at a price of one more goal on that Wisconsin Stevens point deficit. Illinois Tech goal. Third of the match. Scored by number four, Kelly Hitchcock. Assist number 22, Tony Martinez at 241. 6-1 Scarlet Hawks. 241 to go in the first. Paige Allen to take the draw control here as she'll go against Hitchcock for the Scarlet Hawks. Battle of the fours with Illinois Tech leading by five on the scoreboard. Allen, Hitchcock, draw control. Action resumes. Beautiful pass setting up that previous goal for Illinois Tech, Eric. Yeah, it really was. Off the free position. Here's Martinez to the net. I thought she was going to let it go and say she'd go in behind. Martinez looking for someone to pass the ball. You got the yellow card. Martinez back to Hitchcock. Hitchcock working around the perimeter, looking for a teammate, looking for some outlet to move the ball here for the Scarlet Hawks on his possession. It's Martinez who pops up top on the perimeter. Martinez, front of the net. The shot bounced wide left off the south fencing. Pettigrew's at the back line. Scarlet Hawks maintain possession. And one thing you notice here, the coaches, the men's and women's games are very different. And even the coaches and where they like the shot clocks are different. You notice in the men's game, one was in each opposite corner for yep. the women's game. They're both on the far corners. Pettigrew had the ball knocked away. Wisconsin Stevens Point will come up with it. Now we got the ball knocked loose and recovered by the pointers. Grieg gets it out of traffic to Ron. Abby Ron trying to get away there. The junior out of Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Surrounded by a pair of Scarlet Hawks. 
One of them is Martinez. No surprise there. She's been all over the ball. And now she owns possession. One minute to go here in the quarter. Coach Lamity for the Scarlet Hawks calling out the one play. Minute. Martinez, a spin move on the dodge and a goal! Tony Martinez, that was all 22 and white. A bit of a half spin and then a fake and then another spin back to the net to evade the contact and Martinez scores to make it 7-1, her fourth of the day. Officially unassisted for Martinez. And that was just a great effort by Martinez. Again, spinning away from two defenders, spinning back into traffic, and then just firing the shot home to make it 7-1. Hitchcock and Allen on the draw control. Final minute of the quarter. Hitchcock snatches it out of the air. Shock controlling the draw control circle, the face-offs for the Scarlet Hawks. Martinez. Let's see if the Hawks can get some other players involved in the action here. Faith Bush has been a little bit quiet, but she hasn't needed to with Hitchcock and Martinez really stepping up. Pettigrew had that nice opportunity. Martinez just holding here, got a minute on the shot clock. She spins back towards the net, finds Pettigrew. Pettigrew saved by Grieg. A nice read by the keeper for Wisconsin Stevens Point. Even though they're down 6-1, to one, Grieg has made some nice saves here in this opening quarter. Could be a bigger deficit than it is right now, but as it is. She flings out of the traffic, does Grieg. That likely will end the quarter with Huddleston first down there for the Scarlet Hawks. And after one, the Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawks have a 7-1 lead over the Wisconsin Stevens Point pointers. Second quarter action from Chicago coming up after this break here on YouTube Live and the Scarlet Hawks Broadcast Network. NCAA Division III women's lacrosse action continuing right here at Stewart Field in Chicago. The 2-6 Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawks with a 7-1 advantage over the 0-4 Wisconsin Stevens Point Pointers. Here with my partner Eric Willowite, I'm Chris Rouse. Here are some of our first quarter stats as we get ready to begin our second quarter action. Illinois Tech 16 shots in that first quarter compared to 5 for Wisconsin Stevens Point. Two assists on those seven goals for Illinois Tech. Unassisted on the one goal for Van Dyke for Stevens Point in that first quarter. Ground balls even at four piece. Turnovers, five, four favoring Illinois Tech, meaning Stevens Point has turned it over five times in comparison to four. And then of course, both teams with two caused turnovers. 
This matchup right now already on milestone watch. Yeah. For a pair of Illinois Tech players. I know we, we talked about Bush coming up on 100 points. Kelly Hitchcock now needs three goals to get to 100 in her career. In less than two full seasons. That's yep. just outstanding. Here is Faith Bush. 7-1 our score. Bush tries to bounce it home and does just that. Faith Bush scored that one in a matter of about 17 seconds. They'll stop it at 21, but I thought when that thing bounced off the top of the post, it was in. <laughs> it was in at 14:43. 8 1 Scarlet Hawks. So Faith Bush with that goal. That'll add to those almost 100 points. Yeah, she's now three away, so she needed four. She's three away now. And so Bush. Math is not my strong suit, but I can I can work that one out, Chris. So, <laughs> eight one Scarlet Hawks. Also, if this is your first ever NCAA Division three women's the cross matchup, if there is a 10 goal advantage, we have running clock rules. And right now, Illinois Tech, it's only eight one, but starting to get within the range where they can threaten it as if they can get it to 11-1. Remember, as long as there's a 10-goal advantage, it's running clock rules as long as there's a 10-goal advantage. And Illinois Tech up seven with three goals. Worth noting that for our viewers at home. And Coach Lowney's probably happy that someone other than 22-4 and four and White was able to get a tally there. Obviously, Faith Bush being one of them is logical. She's third in the team in scoring. Martinez to Bush. And another goal! Faith Bush scores! For the Scarlet Hawks. What a feed by Martinez. And now Bush, two goals here in under a minute, putting the Hawks up front 9-1. to 9-1 one. One Scarlet Hawks. They've got two goals, not even a minute into the second quarter. The first goal, goal was scored at about the 17-second mark. This one scored at the 58-second mark, end of the quarter. Scarlet Hawks are pouring it on here, up 9-1. And, you know, Eric, we mentioned how the Scarlet Hawks are threatening the running clock rules. I think that will be key for the Scarlet Hawks for once, being on the other side of the running clock rules. Now, you, you don't really have to run up and down the field. You Here's a chance to sort of get some valuable game reps, run some plays, and also get a feel for your teammates. Yeah, it's, it's something good. And, obviously, it's a mixed bag, right? They've played a lot of tough competition. They've been on the other end of things like this. And now they're on the positive end, I and mean, it's just the lay of the schedule. And, Here's, you know, here's Ruby Karras, who's going to try to slow down Illinois Tech's efforts of flying towards the running clock rules. Yeah, let's see if the pointers can set up some possession time here and get something out of it. Van Ooh. Dyke saved wow. by David. That was almost cross to cross. Van Dyke with a great effort there, but David with an even better save. It almost looked like a pass with how quickly right. David put the cross up. Now here comes Wisconsin Stevens point. Caitlin Davitt, I mean, I know the Hawks have had some games where they've been on the, the wrong end on, in some high-scoring games, but she does have several big saves every game, and she's very good on free position shots, too. She's got a, a good record on free position shots, so even though the game's lopsided, she wants to stand tall here. Oh, she kind of slipped in the box. Are going to say a penalty? Yeah. yeah. We get a whistle here. That'll favor Wisconsin Stevens' point. Yeah, so it looks like that was on Hitchcock. And Talir, the first-year player out of St. Louis, Missouri, went down. She'll well, step it up. We'll test Caitlin Davitt right here on a free position shot. Let's see how she does. Let's see if Talir can get a goal here for the pointers. Oh. And she does. Allison Talir, back of the net, scored for Wisconsin Stevens point. Using the bounce shot there, that was a nice goal by Talir. They're second of the match, and now they pull within seven. They stave off that running clock for a little bit here. And what a job there by Talir. Once again, free position opportunity. That was her third free position goal of the season. Third free position goal on four free position shots for Talir. That was her fifth goal of the season. So three of her five goals scored this season have been free position opportunities. Hey, they all count, right? Hey. And also, making the most of opportunities, 60% of free position opportunities, three for five. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Here's Hitchcock. Oh, she ducked underneath Paige Allen there after she won that draw. And now it's Yoakum applying the defensive pressure on Hitchcock with Martinez joining the help for the Scarlet Hawks. 
Antonio Martinez running back towards the Ooh, net. Oh, Allen leaving way too much room. Right, there. way too much space to shoot in a goal. Yeah. Right on cue. You can see that all the way. Yeah. Martinez actually switched, I think, the high hand as she was running in. So she kind of let it be known, I'm shooting this lefty if you're going to give me a shot. Yeah, she just, I mean, Allen just backed off way too much. And you give that much space to Tony Martinez, she knows what to do with it. Hawks back up by eight. Put it right back in the, put it in the right top back of the net is what to do with it for Antonio Martinez. And Tony makes it 10-2, Scarlet Hawks. So as quickly as Wisconsin, Stevens Point finally got a goal to sort of gain some confidence and settle the Scarlet Hawks down. Scarlet Hawks get the draw control, go up the field, score one back. 10-2 score. 12-20 to go in the half. Draw control. It's Hitchcock for the Scarlet Hawks. Actually missed the jersey for Stevens Point. It had been Paige Allen. It's actually Lysing this time. And it's won by Lysing for Wisconsin Stevens Point. Yeah, getting the draw is actually Metzler. Metzler, she dropped it but gained, regained possession. And over to Karras, who was unable to handle the ball, but scoops it right back up quickly for the pointers. Karras dumps it down in behind the net. Sandra Nicholas, quick pass around again for Stevens Point. Pressure coming, chance to go to the net, and a shot to score. Second goal of the day for Marissa Van Dyke. She had the first one. She's got goal number three for Stevens Point. So two of the last three goals scored by the pointers here. And again, they pull within seven. Marissa Van Dyke is Wisconsin Stevens Point's leading scorer. She leads the team in goals with 14. And that goal for Van Dyke, her second of the day, a team leading 16th goal. So entered the match with 14, now has 16 to lead the way for the pointers. But right now, Wisconsin Stevens Point down 10-3. You don't want to trade goals with the Scarlet Hawks. No. Can you get some stops is the question here. And again, if you're the Hawks, then you want to continue to step on the gas here. You're trying to get within that 10-goal bulge, but right now, and another draw control there, putting Lysing there might be a, a good tonic for the pointers here, at least uh, taking some of the momentum away. Lysing goes 5-9, Allen goes 5-5, so you get a taller player on the draw control against Hitchcock, who's 5-5 herself. Here is Lysing. Ball whipped around here to Metzler. That's part of Coach Diaz, you know, finding out what works for his team, certain matchups, and putting Lysing in that draw has been successful the last two opportunities. Karras had it briefly for Wisconsin Stevens Point. She gave it up to Van Dyke. Wow. Van Dyke again. Marissa Van Dyke put the team on your shoulders. She's got three goals. It's 10 4, Scarlet Hawks. Van Dyke has been the offense, the majority of the offense for the pointers. And really, Illinois Tech, they had no answer for Van Dyke. Pretty much going right at Caitlin David on that right side. That's All of those goals have been Van Dyke really slashing from the right side of David, except for the one on the left side of the field. And on the north side, she, swing, she went light, left and got the goal. Yeah, they're going to have to find an answer there. Van Dyke's been able to get around both Niebler now Recamp kind of lined up with her there for the moment on the draw. Remember, all the Van Dyke's goals, she's been at the viewer's left, David's right, and slashed across for a goal. And another draw for Lysing. Lysing. Yep, Lysing might take this one herself, but Hitchcock forces her to redirect. Paige Allen. So now Recamp is marking Van Dyke, who's below the goal line here. You're going to wait and look to see they looked her way. Yeah, Camp goes 5-9 out of Villa Park, Illinois. Actually face guarding Van Dyke on that far side. Who goes 5-5? Villa Park versus Green Bay over there. <laughs> Good job by the Hawks. Keeping Van Dyke out of the box for the moment. Now Paige, Niebler had to shift positions there. Paige Allen has it. Passes over to Lysing. Lysing back to Talir. To Lear, trying to elude Huddleston, but unsuccessful at doing so. Here's Lysing. Lysing to the front of the net. 
Nice pass to Allen. That should be a shot. It is, but it's a save. That was a good setup for the pointers. A lot of weave action, a lot of weave and twirl action, but David able to get the save. Really got it with the leg. Hitchcock comes out of traffic, and here come the Scarlet Hawks with 9.36 and counting to go in the half. Yeah, they need an answer right here to kind of stave off some of the momentum. The pointers pulled within six now. Back-to-back -back goals from Van Dyke. Here's Tony Martinez in possession. Martinez picked up by Lana Berthune. I can hear Coach Diaz saying, Lana, I need you up. And that's what he wanted. He wanted the pressure on Martinez. He don't want her to get the full head of steam so she can drop it off to Bush for the goal. What a pass. Another nice pass by Martinez getting it over to Faith Bush, and she bounces it past Grieg. And now back up to a seven-goal lead for the Hawks. Martinez finding the back of the net for the Scarlet Hawks, and that makes it 11-4. And Martinez, that, that was assisted by Faith Bush, who now, Eric, needs one, one point for well, that 100-point milestone. She scored the goal on that one. Bush scored the goal. Oh, Bush so. scores, excuse yeah, me, yeah. got the goal from right. Martinez. But it is, you're right, bounce. still needs still one Still needs point. one, right, I'm sorry. Got it. Got the goal from Martinez who set up the play. Illinois Tech goal. Third of the match, scored by number 13, Faith Bush. Assist number 22, Tony Martinez at 906. 11 4 Scarlet Hawks. So Bush, again, one point for the 100 point milestone in her career. The goal last time down. Used to Martinez getting all the goals. She actually fed, uh, fed somebody else on that one. Pettigrew's coming in on the charge. Is Dan Martinez a hold? Trying to get things set up here. Maybe looking for 13 and white again, knowing she's one away from a career milestone. She's right in front of Martinez, and honestly looks like that's what they're trying to do. Martinez and Bush is trying to get the goal here. Martinez going again behind the net. Dylan, where's your mark? 8.30 to go. Martinez spinning back door, goes for the goal, had it knocked away, picked up by Grieg. Pass. Oh, Ooh, Hitchcock. Hitchcock almost nabbed that one. Ooh, Lysing comes away unscathed. Now they're going to look right down Broadway. Lysing's going right down the middle. We saw that in the men's game. Lysing to the net, over Huddleston. It bounced off David's leg and over the net. Unfortunate for the pointers. They're able to recover. Allen's pass into traffic, found Lysing. Great hand-eye coordination. I thought that was going to get deflected. Yeah, Lysing's been impressive in this match. Giving Wisconsin Stevens point that control on those draw controls. She's done a great job since adding more height against Kelly Hitchcock. Meanwhile, there's Hitchcock who comes in, knocks down the pass, and takes it away with the, with the ground ball turnover. Nicely done by Kelly there. Always looking for a turnover opportunity because she knows defense to offense, right? That's that's the best thing you can do from a lacrosse standpoint. Many, many games, right? Soccer, basketball, you name it. Transition from defense to offense, but it starts on the defensive end. Mercy Godfrey came to the ball, and then she evacuated the space on the field, so now Hitchcock can take this herself. And we get a whistle. And I think they're going to stop the clock. They were going to get a timeout here for the Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawks. So with 7.06 to go in the half, timeout Scarlet Hawks. It's 11-4. We'll take a break, and we'll be back with more second quarter action here from Stewart Field in Chicago on YouTube Live and the Scarlet Hawks Broadcast Network.
Second quarter action here at Stewart Field in Chicago. NCAA Division III women's lacrosse action continuing with the Illinois Tech Scholar Hawks leading the Wisconsin Stevens Point Pointers 11-4. Here with Eric Willow White, I'm Chris Rouse. This is game two of our doubleheader. The Illinois Tech women's lacrosse team with 11 goals right now. The men's team got 11 in their win earlier against Benedictine 11-10. The women, Eric, trying to complete the sweep for the Scholar Hawks today. Be a nice Saturday for the Skylar Hawks. I know opening weekend they, they each won a Saturday Sunday matchup. They're they're both their home openers, so they're looking to go winning on the same day. Hawks men's lacrosse getting a conference opening victory, huge. which is key. That was a huge victory, huge NAC conference win, and a very seesaw battle here at Stewart Field under the sun. Obviously, not quite as bright as it was a few hours no. ago. Here's Martinez for Hitchcock. A chance to go for goal. And up. Oh, the <laughs> over the head, no look. Goes over the net as well. That would have certainly been a highlight. That would have been. That's creativity there from Hitchcock. And really, again, when you get in that tight, sometimes those are the things you have to do because you don't have a whole lot of space to work with. Hitchcock just tried to loft it in there. Martinez. Martinez. Trying to get to the net. I can hear Wisconsin Stevens Point Coach Diaz saying, stop switching. He wants everybody to stay at home. And as a result, Lysing comes up with the ball. Yes, yeah, nice, nice turnover, cause turnover there for the pointers. And Lysing has done very well, both in the circle as well as defensively. Lysing to the net. Long pass. It goes in behind the cage. Unable to get to the net are the pointers. They try to feed one inside. This time for Talir. The ball gets knocked away. Ooh. The person they really wanted was Van Dyke, but she's just now joining the attack as she gets the ground ball pickup. Here's Van Dyke to the front of the net. A shot saved by Davitt. Actually caught it. That's a nice save by Davitt. As you saw Van Dyke, how quickly she got around her camp there. She's quick. Yeah. And that's twice Davitt also quick, showing those reflexes to make a catch on the save. All right. Kirk Lamity clapping at his team as they come up the field, saying, great job. They have an 11-4 advantage with five minutes and counting to go here in the first half. It looked like Illinois Tech was going to run towards the running clock rules, but Wisconsin Stevens Point able to wrap up, uh, put in three straight, three or four goals at one point again. The yeah, they, they've played well here, especially in this second quarter. They've responded nicely. Still a big deficit, but it's, it's a lot closer than what it was. Bush to Martinez. Oh. That was saved by Grieg. Had to go off wow. the fencing. Pettigrew will maintain possession for the Scarlet Hawks. Iona Pettigrew. Pettigrew, pass to Martinez. That's not there. Here's Martinez now. She's trying to drive. Oh. Well, she just fell down against Lysing. Good job by Lysing, just literally backing out the way. No foul. Hitchcock, holding out high. Probably the slowest this match has been played. Illinois Tech's been up and down the field for the majority of the match. Hitchcock, screen for Martinez, and a foul on Lysing. Actually, no, to go on Martinez. Yeah, they're going to say an illegal pick there, so turnover Hawks. Not only did she get the worst of the collision, she gets the violation. Yeah. And here come the pointers. Long run. Alyssa Yoakum. Gives it up quickly to Sandra Nicolas. Nicolas, that, ooh, that was a sidearm. I'm not so sure that wasn't even hit by the Scarlet Hawks. <laughs> Looked very weird. I'm not, I thought maybe Niebuhr hit it, but that was just a wild pass, and it leads to a whistle. And that will be a Stevens Point timeout. Yeah. So the pointers want to settle themselves down, not liking what they saw on the field. They'll take a timeout with 332 to go in the half. It's 11-4 Scarlet Hawks. We'll take another break. When we return, we'll likely conclude our first half action here from Stewart Field.
11-4, our score with 3.32 remaining in the first half. Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawks lead it 11-4 over the Wisconsin Stevens Point Pointers here at Stewart Field. He's Eric Willowite. I'm Chris Rouse. Eric, your assessment of this first half. Well, it's a good first half for the Scarlet Hawks. In addition to that, I, I still think it's a good first half for the Pointers. Um, you know, they, they've done much better here in the second quarter. Uh, but the Hawks still holding a seven-goal lead, so they've kind of slowed things down, as you mentioned. They kind of slowed down the offense and, and looking for more possession time right now. And let's see if this timeout helps the pointers here as they reset, trying to get a goal to cut their deficit back to six. Paige Allen passed it to Lising and now around the perimeter for the pointers, who in this second quarter, they have controlled the tempo. It's been a slower match. Marissa Van Dyke with a few goals for the pointers thus far. And that's really changed the way the Scarlet Hawks have approached the pointers to this point in the matchup. And now Hitchcock comes up with it. Three minutes remaining in the half. Hitchcock wanted to drop it off to Martinez. Instead, she'll just peel out. They're still thinking about passing. Now she'll finally give it to Martinez. That's a difficult pass, yeah. trying to do it parallel as opposed to just dropping it back. So I think that's what she was waiting for to get in that far corner. Now here comes Martinez going towards the net. He has a chance to shoot, and a whistle. As Martinez was about to shoot, we get the whistle. Likely going to be a free possession opportunity. And that is going to be the case. So Martinez will get a free possession opportunity. Yeah, this one straight on to Emily Grieg here. I don't think she's going to pass on this one unless Faith Bush is going to slip in somewhere. I don't. I don't. No, I don't think that's happening. 22 versus 22, Martinez versus Grieg, and it's white wow. 22 <laughs> who beats purple 22 to make it 12-4, Scarlet Hawks. That was quite the shot by Martinez. How many is that for her now? A side-winding rifle from Martinez makes it 12-4, Scarlet Hawks. As for Martinez, she continues to pour on what's been an amazing day for this Scarlet Hawk team. That is goal number six for Martinez. It's 12-4 Scarlet Hawks. You would look at that and think, oh, man, maybe four, five, six different people have scored. Three players have scored for the Scarlet Hawks. Martinez has six. Hitchcock has three. And Bush has the other three. Well, those are going to be your three likely suspects for the Scarlet <laughs> Hawks. So not a big surprise there. And another draw control for Kelly Hitchcock. And Hitchcock walking towards that net for the Scarlet Hawks. Actually, now she starts. She turns on the Jets right as I say it. Oh. Walk off the crossbar, off the bounce. Wow. Godfrey tried to knock it free. Pettigrew trying to control it. Godfrey still trying to get in there. Martinez finally comes up with it for the Scarlet Hawks. Oh, she is so close. A tough break there for Hitchcock as that one bounced away. Remember, she's approaching that 100-goal milestone. Only three in the match. Still needs three more. Only three in the match. Right, only right, only three. <laughs> Ooh. Hitchcock goes down. She's back on her feet, but, yeah, she took a big tumble there. And Here's Bush looking for a .100, and there it is. Faith Bush with .100, and the goal makes it 13-4, Scarlet Hawks. They're trying to get a ball for Faith Bush because, as we just mentioned, that is career point number 100, and she used a goal to find the back of the net. The match scored by number 13, Faith Bush. For Faith Bush, that is her 100th career point. 1-0-0 zero, zero on the point total for Faith Bush. It's 13-4 Scarlet Hawks. As Bush, Bush gets the milestone, but also, Eric, running clock if the Scarlet Hawks can score in these next 89 seconds. That's a good point. Let's see what they do in the draw here. Hitchcock bats it down. Trying to combat Lysing there and just knock it down and then go after it as opposed to trying to battle her one-on-one -on -one for it. And then also, that's a long run for Lysing when she doesn't win right. because they need her size to protect the net with greed. Here's Martinez. So we got one milestone down. Let's see if Hitchcock can get in. Here's a chance. Oh. There's a chance and a goal. Wow. Kelly Hitchcock with the goal. 14-4 Scarlet Hawks.
that activates running clock yes, rules. It yes, it does. But that's not the milestone. She still needs no. two goals, does Hitchcock. Right. That's her fourth of the day, 43rd of the season. Illinois Tech goal. Her fourth of the match, scored by number four, Kelly Hitchcock. Assist number 22, Tony Martinez. So at 101. So once again, 14 four hour score here at Stewart Field. That activates running clock rules as long as it's a 10 point advantage, 10 goal advantage for the Scarlet Hawks. Remember, if Wisconsin Stevens points, say Lysing wins this draw control and scores, that cuts it off. We go back to regular rules. Yeah, remember, it was an 11 4 game for a little bit there, Chris, but now they've tacked down the last three and got the 10 goal advantage that they were looking for a little while back. And now here's Faith Bush, fresh off her 100th career point. Might as well get one-on-one, right? Right. <laughs> and what better way to do it than to get another goal, extend those running clock rules if you're a Scarlet Hawk fan. And yeah, they need to – well, they don't need to, but yeah. see if they try and get one shot. No, it looks like Tony's yeah, just going to hold on to it. And yeah, Martinez will hold it. Yeah. And at the half, the Scarlet Hawks will take the minimum running clock rules lead into the break, 14-4, as they lead it by 10. We'll come back with a recap of our first half, and then we'll preview the second half, and then we'll get it on with the second half action after this. This is Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawks Women's Lacrosse on the Scarlet Hawks Broadcast Network and on YouTube Live.
NCAA Division III Women's Lacrosse here on the Scarlet Hawks Broadcast Network and in you and on YouTube Live, coming to you from Stewart Field in Chicago, Illinois, where we're at halftime of this women's lacrosse matchup, non-conference action between the Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawks at two and six. They lead it 14 to four over the winless Wisconsin Stevens Point Pointers, who come in with a record of 0-4 in their first season as a women's lacrosse program. First half stats to our point in the broadcast. My partner Eric Willow White will join me in just a moment. But first half stats, 14 for our score. Illinois Tech 27 shots. Meanwhile, Wisconsin Stevens Point only 12. 14 of the 27 have found the back of the net for Illinois Tech. Five of the 14 goals were assisted upon for the Scarlet Hawks. No assist for Wisconsin Stevens Point. Ground balls favoring the pointers, eight to seven, so plus one for the visitors, also plus one for them on ground balls and saves. Seven to six in saves, eight seven in the ground balls, as I mentioned. Turnovers and calls turnovers are dead even. Seven turnovers for each team, three calls turnovers for each team, but that's not the story as Illinois Tech leads it 14-4. To this point in the match, here are the scores. Marissa Van Dyke has three of the four goals for Wisconsin Stevens Point. Allison Talier has the other goal not scored by 19 in purple. Meanwhile, only three players have scored for Illinois Tech. They have 14. They have six from Tony Martinez and then four apiece from Hitchcock and Bush. And then, of course, Bush, 100 career points with the goal she scored earlier. Meanwhile, Kelly Hitchcock, with four goals in the match, needs two to get 100 career points. Goals in her for her lacrosse career. So Illinois Tech up 14-4. The match currently being played under running clock rules as it's a 14-4 advantage, Illinois Tech. As long as there's a 10-point advantage on the scoreboard, running clock rules. Meaning if Wisconsin Stevens Point were to fling one in right here, the, we go back to normal clock rules, but let's see how the Scarlet Hawks stand up defensively. Here's Lysing trying to go into traffic. Courtney Lysing. Pass goes up high to Paige Allen. Courtney Lysing was a, I want to say a bit of a game changer for Wisconsin Stevens Point, but it's hard to really make that claim when they're still down 10. But her efforts on those draw controls certainly got them on the board. There was a point where it seemed like they were only going to have one all day. Yeah, they put. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say she uh, it game changer for a point, right? Yeah. Uh, pushed the momentum to the pointer's way for a little stretch there. Uh, but, you know, the Hawks... With their top three scorers, they're just too hard to keep off the scoreboard, and that's why you have a 10-goal uh, lead at this moment. And you made the observation in the first half, Eric, it was Kelly Hitchcock using her cross, using her stick to sort of match Lysing in size. She was out jumping her just using the stick. Despite the fact Lysing, who goes 5'9", has a four-inch height advantage on Hitchcock. Martinez has it out top for the Scarlet Hawks. Ball goes in again. Mar Martinez has it up top. Still looking around for the Scarlet Hawks as they try to make headway to the net. Here's Martinez. Loses the ball out in front of a new keeper for Wisconsin Stevens Point. Emily Grieg no longer out there. They'll go with Allie Schmidtley, another first-year keeper out of Wisconsin. You know, Wisconsin. So a couple of first-year keepers for Coach Christian Diaz. And ideally, first-year coach, first year with a program. you got two freshmen as keepers, two first-years as keepers. Yeah, this is likely who you build with on. you the yeah. program, right? <laughs> right? This is likely how you're going to build it. Here's Lysing. Lysing to the net. It's not, un not uncommon to see that. You and I, we saw the beginning of the U Chicago lacrosse program. They've been a legit powerhouse yeah. at the D3 level since working around younger keepers early on. Working with them, I should say. As you see Pettigrew get the foul there. We'll have a free position shot. Looks like that's coming for Paige Allen. Allen will get it. Free position opportunity to the right angle of David. A chance to turn off the running clock rules here. That goes wide left. That goes off the fencing here at Stewart Field off the north side. Marissa Van Dyke, three of the four goals for Wisconsin Stevens Point. It's been Van Dyke and Lysing, really. No, Allison Talier had a goal as well, but 
Oh, it's been Lysing and Van Dyke. They've been the two consistent players for the pointers. Here's a pass inside to Talir. Talir takes solid oh. contact. That's definitely a foul. That's 10 on 10 crime there is Izzy Niebler. Yeah, Niebler. Or was that Van Dyke? Or who was? It was Niebler who it made was, the contact yeah. on uh, Allison Talir. Allison Talir. So she's going to get her second free position attempt here. We, we stated earlier she's three for five on three free positions throughout the season, including the one she scored earlier. Talir. Goes for goal, now 50%, three for six. David looking for Pettigrew. Makes it 14, it's 14-4 Scarlet Hawks. Remember, running clock rules as long as there's a 10-goal advantage. So all Wisconsin Stevens point needs is one goal to stop and get it back to regular rules. But also all Illinois Tech needs is one to extend the lead and make it tougher for Wisconsin Stevens point to make that goal happen. Yeah, the clock will only stop for a timeout. And here's a shot that gets sort of crossed away there by Schmidtley, the keeper for Wisconsin Stevens Point. Scooped up on the back line by the Scarlet Hawks is Godfrey. Mercy Godfrey has another one of those players. We talked about it in the first game where you see a number of players who are constantly active. They don't really have any stats, but they've been all over the field. Yeah. I mean, and with the thin rosters for both these teams, you just have to fill up positions there. And there's 101 for Faith Bush. And she fills up the net, does Faith Bush, for the 15-4 Scarlet Hawks advantage. So the Scarlet Hawks extend their lead here with 10:45 and counting here in the third quarter. Faith Bush with the goal. <laughs> Bush with the fifth goal. Bush with her fifth goal of the day. And for Bush on the season, that now puts her at 17. Scarlet Hawks will lead at 15-4. And we get a little substitution for Coach Lamity. As, as much substitutions as right. you can. <laughs> Kenza Afif coming in for Maritza Torres here at the 10-minute mark in the third quarter so that'll complete participation for the Scarlet Hawks so Afif the senior out of France replaces the junior out of Mexico in Torres so here comes Wisconsin Stevens Point with Paige Allen oh Allen lost it as she tried to swim against Huddleston Allen just seems uncomfortable if Huddleston gets too close, here's Lysing and a foul. Good That's, call. Yeah, they're going to get the free position attempt here. And I'm curious if the move for Huddleston to the back line, if that's going to be a permanent move, if that's just temporary. You know, again, they do not have uh, Theodora Prosiliakis, one of their defenders, uh, in uniform. So I don't know if that's just to kind of, you know, shift things around temporarily. Uh, well, She's in a walking boot right, over she's there, in a boot. so I don't, I don't yeah. know if she's coming back anytime soon. So this might be a little permanent-ish. Right, I was say I don't know with that walking boot. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to be anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. that's not for style. She's wearing there. And here's a shot for Wisconsin Stevens Point that goes out of play. It is a shot, so they'll maintain possession with the back line. And also remember, 33 on the shot clock. Nine minutes and counting to go here in the third. He's Eric Willowite. I'm Chris Rouse. This is Illinois Tech Women's Lacrosse on the Scarlet Hawks Broadcast Network. That is an errant pass. And now a scrum. And, and a whistle. Say Illinois Tech ball? Yeah. So it is Scarlet Hawk ball. That was, so Hitchcock comes away with it. It did oh. appear he's pointing Whoa. that way. Now Hitchcock takes a spill. Hitchcock goes down. The official clears Talir out of the area as they find Hitchcock's stick. I know Coach Roshane Ellison is the game ops manager for today, and I'm sure every time he sees foreign white dropping down to the turf, it's like, <laughs> you know, a palpitation or two. I'm looking over at Roshane. He's just watching on. <laughs> Definitely uh, not as emotional as he is during soccer games, just kind of watching yeah. regular, like a regular human, you know, like a regular citizen, sort of like us. Because <laughs> he's certainly not regular when he's watching those women's oh, soccer no, matches. Oh, <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. I love Coach Roshane Ellison, man, a good dude. Always uh, gives me a greeting when I come out to the soccer match. He says he likes when I show up because they score a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
I'm going to have to book you for every match, home match now. Hey, hey, I was there when they lost 1-0 in the tournament. So oh, that know. was a tough one. <laughs> yeah, there's a goal for the Scarlet Hawks. And that'll make it 16-4. On the free position. And another free position opportunity for the Scarlet Hawks. As once again, they continue to add on to their lead. Running clock rules will remain as long as it's a 10-goal advantage. It's 12 right now in Wisconsin Stevens Point. Having a hard time to gain rhythm offensively. Goal number seven for Martinez. Martinez has seven. Bush has five. Hitchcock has four. Scarlet Hawks just going all <laughs> the same three players flying <laughs> in the back of the net. Yeah. Well, let's see. Again, we're two goals away from the 100-goal mark for Kelly Hitchcock, so let's see if she's able to reach that milestone here as Martinez flips it over to Kelly. And obviously, the pointers are going to pay a lot of attention to four. Nice run down the middle of the field by Huddleston, but the ball instead goes to Bush. 101 career points. Scored a goal to get .100. I'm sure that's a highlight that will live on forever in yeah. her memory. Here's Bush. Back out to Huddleston, who is on the offensive line now. Huddleston over to Hitchcock. Yeah, so I think when they brought a thief in, then Huddleston moved up Makes when sense. Torres went out from the attack. More speed with Huddleston. Here's Hitchcock to the net, and a goal! Kelly Hitchcock, her 44th goal of the season. That is career goal number 99, and we are one goal away from another milestone here at Stewart Field. At 6.04. So Kelly Hitchcock, 44th goal of the season, 99th career goal. What a career for Kelly Hitchcock. Yeah, and again, we're like maybe halfway through the, her second season. <laughs> right. So, yeah, it's it's quite an accomplishment for, for Kelly. Remember, Illinois Tech will be back at home again in another men's and women's lacrosse doubleheader. It'll actually be reversed next week. It'll be a women's match first against Marion, the Sabres. And then the men take the field to take on those same Marion Sabres. We'll have all of that for you right here on the Scarlet Hawks Broadcast Network. Yeah, that's uh, we're going to do breakfast with uh, lacrosse here. <laughs> a 10 a.m. match for the women's team next Saturday. Lysing almost scooped it into the net, scooped up there by David instead for the Scarlet Hawks. I know they've done that before. I can't remember if that was last year or 2022 where we played Wisconsin Eau Claire at the uh, in the 10 o'clock game. So it's not uncommon to see the Scarlet Hawks play a 10 a.m. women's lacrosse match here at Stewart Field. They do it at least once a year. Well, this one was kind of out of necessity yeah. that <laughs> April 6th. Our, our slate for home matches next Saturday is ridiculous. Two, a lacrosse doubleheader, a baseball doubleheader, and a men's volleyball game all in the middle. Here's Hitchcock, the shot, and the there goal! It is. And how about a milestone? Goals. How about a milestone in the middle of this game, Mr. Willow White? That was incredible. Goal 100 for Kelly Hitchcock. Her 45th of the season. Career goal 1-0-0-100. One, zero, zero, and they're going to go get her the game ball. We got a ball earlier for Bush. We got one for Hitchcock. Here's the call at Stewart Field. Illinois Tech goal. Scored by number four, Kelly Hitchcock at 420. The goal by Kelly Hitchcock was her 100th career goal in an Illinois Tech uniform in only a season and a half of play. Congratulations, Kelly. 100 career goals in an Illinois Tech uniform for Kelly Hitchcock. And that goal makes it 18 for her sixth of the day, 45th of the season. There she is back on the attack again, winning a draw. She said, let's get 101. Bush got 101 on the points. Let me get 101 on the goal. There you go. Here's Martinez. Huddleston joining the attack. Martinez sort of just using Hitchcock as a blocker. That was, that was <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. It was almost like a running back just hiding behind the offensive line there, and Kelly played it exactly that way. Now Huddleston back out to Martinez. Martinez just watching with Bethune trying to apply pressure. 
The pass goes to Bush. Bush lost it in traffic. Pointers just having a hard time scooping the ball and getting out of there, but they finally are successful thanks to Paige Allen. Yeah, it was a good defensive sequence there for the Pointers. I know they're down big here, but they still want to play as sound as they can, and they could get a good opportunity out of this. Lysing has had a pretty good game via the eye test. Let's see if she can score. She wow. does. Coast that was a run. Almost. Right, that was a beautiful run by Courtney Lysing. We mentioned how well she's played. It doesn't go in the stat sheet, some of the things she's done, even though she's done a great job on the ground, on the uh, draw controls and the ground balls, but finally scores. The Wisconsin Stevens point, I'm sure you just want to see that go through. Just see the ball go into the net one time. I mean, it's been a pretty much an Illinois Tech parade to the net up until Lysing got that goal. Yeah, that, again, all that started with a good defensive effort there in their own zone, causing the turnover, and then fighting for the loose ball. And then once Lysing got possession, she just barreled her way down. And I know Izzy Niebler tried to keep up with her, but uh, Lysing was determined to get that shot on net, and she fired it past Davitt for the fifth pointer's goal. Her eighth of the season. Lysing second on the team behind only Marissa Van Dyke, who with three on the day has 17 on the season. Here's Hitchcock. Back to Martinez. Martinez over to Bush. Bush to the net. Bush is shot, deflected away, and it's run down by Van Dyke. Just mentioned her. Nice save there by Schmidley. Yeah, Ali Schmidley came in at halftime to replace the starting keeper, Emily Grieg. Now here comes Wisconsin Stevens Point with Lysing. Good cut to the net. But one minute remaining in the quarter, one minute. Hitchcock pushing the other way as we, we've we entered the final minute of this third quarter anyway. Still got another 15-minute fourth quarter to play. That will be played at running clock rules just like this one was played. As long as it maintains a, remains a 10-point advantage, Illinois Tech with a 13-goal advantage right now. And Lysing looked like she was going to get off another shot attempt there, but a caused turnover by the Hawks, and they were able to regain possession. They might just milk the clock down here. And the shot clock, I mean, it, the shot clock favors them. It's, like, it's at 53. The game clock's at 20, so you could just hold it. We saw them do this at the end of the half Yeah. when they had the 10-point advantage. Martinez still holding. And it's been a all-Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawk lacrosse day here at Stewart Field. The men won 11-10. The women lead at 18-5 and through three quarters. That is our score, 18-5. Scarlet Hawks over the pointers. 15 more minutes from Chicago. We hope you join us as we get ready to wrap this up in the fourth quarter on, from Stewart Field on YouTube Live and on the Scarlet Hawks Broadcast Network. Welcome back to Chicago, Illinois, Stewart Field to be exact. We hope you're enjoying your Saturday. I hope you're enjoying it with us here for Illinois Tech Women's Lacrosse on the Scarlet Hawks Broadcast Network and on YouTube Live. Next Saturday, a lacrosse doubleheader, and we're going to be right here at Stewart Field again, the same two teams, the Illinois Tech men's and women's lacrosse teams take the field, but they'll take on the Marion Sabres in both men's and women's action as we get knack. Lacrosse conference play going. It'll be a 10 a.m. 
start for the women's matchup, and then at 1 p.m. And then at 1 p.m. we will see the Scarlet Hawks take on the Sabres in men's action. So we remember that'll be at 10 a.m. next week. Women's action for the cross, followed by 1 p.m. men's action. Scarlet Hawks doubleheader against the Marion Sabres. Chris Rouse here with Eric Willowite. Fourth quarter action getting ready to be in. It's been all Scarlet Hawks in this second half as we get ready to get the opening draw control here between Hitchcock and Lysing. Glad that you've been, once again, glad that you were able to join us here. 51 degrees for this second game. It was, 60, it was 61 degrees for the first game. It's 51 here for the second game. And the wind continuing to pick up now at 11 miles per hour. It's at 10 during the ending of that first matchup. And now here comes Wisconsin Stevens Point pushing back towards the other end of the field. Ruby Karras back out there. Up, well, Eric. You mentioned the Scarlet Hawks will take on Marion next week. How huge will this be for the Scarlet Hawks getting ready for conference play here at Stewart Field? Yeah, anytime. I mean, I'm always torn when the, the, the last game before you start conference play is a lopsided game either one way or the other. Ooh, that was a tough fall there by Lysing. Hopefully she's okay. Um, but... I mean, you, you play whoever's on your schedule, right? right? But from do. a confidence standpoint, it's, it's a good thing, and, and you get the offense going, so you have some momentum going into that match. But, you know, is it going to be, you know, what's that step up to competition you're going to see against Marion coming from a program who's in its, you know, very first year? So there's things to be said for that. But then again, I said the same thing with the men's tennis team. They played uh, Lakeland in their first conference match, and they won that one 9 to nothing. But then they had a matchup against MSOE the next day. And I was worried that the difference in competition, because MSOE came in as the number one ranked mm -hmm. men's tennis team, the Hawks beat them 8-1. to one. So sometimes it just it doesn't matter if you're on your game. Martinez was looking inside to Pettigrew. Pettigrew runs one down. That was a long way to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what, hey, we have yeah. nothing but time here. we got 13 <laughs> minutes <laughs> thirteen minutes yeah. to feel here at Stewart Field where it's been all Scarlet Hawks. Pettigrew dropped that one behind her. How about the men's matchup? That was a very back-and-forth matchup against Benedictine earlier. That was two teams just fighting it out tooth and nail, and uh, the Hawks able to come away with that late goal. And, and then you know, we talked about Micah Manukian getting the – uh, drawing the penalty for the Hawks to get a man advantage up with a, in the final minute there. So it was, it was just a, a huge game for the Skyler Hawks. Talked briefly with Coach Jarbaugh after the match, and you know he was very happy they were able to come out with a win, but I'm sure he'll find things he, he needs the team to work on, but that's what coaches do. I was about to say, they, you know what they say about coaches. They're only happy when they're unhappy. Right. <laughs> when, no, coaches are only happy when they have something to work on. That, not, is, that <laughs> is true. It's yeah. Pettigrew. If everything's good, something's wrong, right? <laughs> if, if everything's good and you don't have a championship, something's yeah. wrong. Here's Huddleston. Yeah. Out top for the Scarlet Hawks, even though I have to say with Coach Sharball, that was a very physical affair. It really was. And for the Scarlet Hawks to win that with 11-10 after losing 10-9 last time they were home, that would be a bit, bit of sweet taste for that Scarlet Hawks team to erase that loss against Calvin. Martinez was getting triple teamed in the box there, so Huddleston got the – feed into her but she was being triple team there was no space for her to work with and I think the Hawks are content just kind of letting the air out of the ball so to speak all right they're just watching the clock tick I am looking at Hitchcock she's oh. been much more aggressive when it's one-on-one -on -one. she's facing a double team and just holding you yeah know? now they get it off to Bush Bush with Martinez to her left she'll take it her left and said she Ooh. misses wide right on the shot but Pettigrew on the back line <coughs> running Low on the clock here. If they get a shot clock violation, I'm sure that's probably not the worst thing for the Scarlet Hawks, but they'd probably like to get one shot off here. Ten seconds. Pettigrew in the traffic, Ooh. met by four purple jerseys. Ooh. Pettigrew goes down. And they are going to keep the clock going. Free position shot. You know, trying yep. to see what they're going to do here. Yeah, it is are. free position. And that's unfortunate for Stevens' point. I'm sure they just want to stop playing defense at this point. But that was a good effort by Pettigrew. She knew the clock was running down. She took it straight to the net. She drew the contact, gets the free position attempt out of it. And she goes for goal and finds it. Iona Pettigrew becomes the fourth Scarlet Hawk to score today. 19-5, Scarlet Hawks continuing to pour it on. 
It's been all Illinois Tech in the second half. And Pettigrew, Pettigrew with that goal, that is her fourth of the season. And her fourth goal of the season allows her to be the fourth Scarlet Hawk to score on this final Saturday of March, 2024. That was just a nice determined effort to draw the foul and then get the free position attempt. But knowing that the shot clock was running low, she just made her way around the net there and drew a lot of traffic and was able to get the free position and tallied on it. Right, the aggressiveness sort of baited Stevens' point. Yeah. And then having to be aggressive defensively, and when they did that, they, they picked up the foul, led to the free position. Hitchcock and Lysing again on the draw control, won by the home team's Kelly Hitchcock. 19-5, 9-30 and counting. Remaining in this matchup. If you're just joining us, this match currently being played under running clock rules. Oh. Martinez for Hitchcock for the Scarlet Hawks. Ball knocked loose in front of the net. Still a scrum in front of Schmidley. The keeper for Stevens Point, and now Schmidley comes away with it. Ali Schmidley. Lysing. Lysing getting double teamed there. There's Godfrey again. Once again, doesn't go in the stat sheet, but making an impact, forcing Lysing to redirect. Paige Allen. It's 19-5 Scarlet Hawks. I mentioned it was running clock rules. Remember in NCAA Division III women's lacrosse, as long as there's a 10-goal advantage, running clock rules, and Illinois Tech up, 15, up 14 right now. Pointers still have some nice building blocks. You know, you talked about Lysing. She's yeah. played really well. Van Dyke, obviously, the leading scorer there. I'd even say Greg has played well. I know Greek played well. I, yeah, yeah, I know. I know the score does. You know, you think nineteen five. The keeper couldn't have done. It. She did a great job on a number of those shots from the Scarlet Hawks. Yeah, but Allison Talier had a couple attempts there. I mean, if you give a team thirty chances to shoot at you, they're bound to punch one through. That's true. And we get the whistle. And that whistle will favor Wisconsin Stevens Point here. This program, remember, in their first, the first year of this program, the inaugural season of Wisconsin Stevens Point Pointers Women's Lacrosse, a well-known school, of course, up in Wisconsin in the WIAC, Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. Of course, alums include Terry Porter, former NBA player with the Portland Trailblazers, NBA coach. Well, they gave Niebler an opportunity to carry it underneath the restraining line there. She lost it just as they got in, and now here's Lysing. Here's Lysing going to the front of the net. It might be a shooting space violation. Yeah, there. I think that's what it is. And it was. Good job by Lysing drawing that, drawing the violation. Once she realized she had the defense in close, showed off a shot attempt. That leads to shooting space. Lysing on the free position opportunity. Lysing tries to bounce it home and does. Lysing scores for the second time today. She beats Davitt to make it 19-6, Scarlet Hawks. Courtney Lysing, the junior out of Maple Grove, Minnesota, takes advantage. And just like that, Wisconsin Stevens Point. One thing that this Wisconsin Stevens Point team does have going for their ability on the free position opportunities. They have two free position goals today. Yeah, they've done well with that. And Lysing getting another tally on the game. So again, you know, another building block player who's able to get a score there. Once again, this is a Wisconsin Stevens Point team, inaugural season of their lacrosse, women's lacrosse program. A number of young players, though, that, like Eric said, appears they can build around. You got Marissa Van Dyke's a first-year player, three goals today. The two keepers they have are also first years. Courtney Lysing is probably the one player that will likely depart, depart first, being that she's a junior. As now, at least they'll hopefully get one more year out of her. Was, exactly. She's looked very promising. Right, she got that goal on the free position that we just saw. And it, at one point, arguably back in that second quarter, she changed the tide of this game with her ability to win the draw control. Kirk Lamity all smiles here with 540 and counting. You got to... Just thinking of the women's across photo day, and 
if I'm not mistaken, for Kelly's photo day, if you zoom in on her right arm, she's got a bruise from a lacrosse ball showing. It's Ooh. like typical <laughs> typical lacrosse injury and uh, just happened to be showing in the – on the picture, I and think that's what it was. <laughs> and of course, yeah. it's on the shoulder of the team's leading goal scorer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, hey, these goals don't come easy. Martina no. has. <laughs> yeah, look at that. She gets triple team, double team, triple team. Out to Hitchcock. One hundred careers, one hundred career goals scored thanks to today. Looks like she'll get a free position opportunity, which is an opportunity to go for one hundred and one. Let's see what she does if she passes to Martinez. No, Sidewinder and a goal. Kelly Hitchcock makes it 26 Scarlet Hawks. Is that her seventh of the day? That would be right. the seventh of the day. Huh. Her 46th of the season. Career goal 101. So Hitchcock got to career goal 100 and goal 101. Bush got to point. 100 and point 101 in this same match. Milestone Saturday here at Stewart Field for the women's lacrosse team. Yeah, it really has been. They have a 20 to 6 advantage as that temperature continues to drop, but the clock continues to tick as well. well the good thing is it's still daylight a yeah. little bit, you know, so, man, if this was a night match right now, it, it would be, oh. be bad news. Pretty good crowd on hand, especially for the men's match. We had a lot of the red. Of course, like we mentioned earlier, Benedictine only in it's only in Lyle, so they yeah. had a pretty good crowd. And then Wisconsin Stevens Point, obviously a longer trip than from Lyle, Illinois, but a pretty good crowd of purple and gold over there. Yeah, but I like seeing more lacrosse programs, whether it's men's or women's lacrosse. You know, more universities picking yep. up the program. So, especially in the Midwest, that's important because mm -hmm. a lot of teams are fighting to get conferences. Uh, you know. University of Chicago is an example, looking to get into uh, you know a conference moving forward, and uh, you know it's it's not easy to do because there just aren't as many teams as there are in the Northeast. And another thing with the consistent realignment of college athletics, it's yep. starting to trickle down in the divisions: D two, D three, even Roosevelt. The Lakers have gone up from NAIA to D two, so you're seeing schools trying to add everything they can to go up higher in division to be at a higher level of competition. Yep. Wisconsin Stevens point in behind the net. Chance to try to get a shot for Van Dyke. Shoots it right off of David. A rebound opportunity could have been scooped up for Talir. Instead, she spin, spins out and spills to the ground. And now Martinez. What an effort by Van Dyke, though, because Grace Recamp was like with her step for step, eluded Recamp, and then Faith Bush tried to pick her up, and she was still able to get around Bush and get a shot off. Nice save there from David, but man. That persistence from Van Dyke, impressive, and that's obviously why you see her as the leading goal scorer for the pointers. Two to twenty-two with two minutes remaining. Martinez from Huddleston. Two oh seven and counting. As we mentioned, next week, next Saturday, we got a ten a.m. start for the women's lacrosse matchup against the Marion Sabers, and then a one p.m. start for the men's matchup against the same school, the Marion Sabers. Knack lacrosse action right here at Stewart Field. On the Scarlet Hawks Broadcast Network. Huddleston. Working. Back to the front. Huddleston. No one there. Drops it off to Hitchcock. Final 100 seconds. Nice pick. Although nothing coming from it, but right, Huddleston I was thinking, setting the pick. All right, I was thinking the same thing. Nice pick, but no shot. Yeah. The pass almost went to the net. It was intended for Pettigrew as that ball actually <laughs> rolled under the fence and out of Stewart Field. Ball shaggers love that. <laughs> I saw the referee. He was going to pick it up, and then it rolled underneath. And he just <laughs> said, all right, new ball. <laughs> Here's Berthium. Line up Berthium on the outlet. Ooh, ooh, ooh big the contact collision, there. Yeah. That was incidental. All incidental, but One still. One minute remaining in the match. Still cold. Still going to be. Needed some ice for either Talir or Niebuhr. I'm sure they both needed on the hip after that contact. Yeah, that was that was heavy contact there. Hopefully both players are okay. Yeah, Talir looks pretty hobbled there and the shoulder. Long pass off the fencing here at Stewart Field, the south side of the fencing. I don't know if that was a shot attempt. He said it was a shot. He pointed to Stevens yeah. Point. Final 
30 seconds. We're glad you were all able to join us here this afternoon from Chicago as another shot goes wide from Van Dyke. Thank you. Thank you to everyone that joined us for both matches. The men's 11-10 win over Benedictine. And now this match is going to come final in about 15 seconds. The Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawks will get their third win of the season. They'll go to 3-6. and six. Wisconsin Stevens Point still looking for their first win in program history. But the Scarlet Hawks own the day here at Stewart Field. A home sweep. They take care of the house here on the near south side of Chicago, Eric. Yeah, that was an impressive win for the Scarlet Hawks. They opened up the gates fast and furious. Little push there from the pointers in that second quarter, but then Illinois Tech uh, reclaimed the momentum of the game and coming out with a 20 to six win, a running clock win. And as you said, a couple milestones, 100 career points for Faith Bush and 100 career goals for Kelly Hitchcock. It's a good day. It's always a pleasure to do these broadcasts with you here, Eric, at uh, Stewart Field as we will as wrap well, it up. Chris. We'll wrap it up here on the south side of Chicago. Once again, our final, the Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawks 20, the Wisconsin Stevens Point Pointers 6. Doubleheader action on the Scarlet Hawks broadcast network next Saturday, 10 a.m., women's lacrosse against the Marion Sabres, 1 p.m., men's lacrosse against the same Marion Sabres. For all of our crew here at Stewart Field and on the near south side of Chicago, enjoy your Saturday, and we thank you for joining us. So long from Chicago, where the Scarlet Hawks win it 20-6 over the Wisconsin Stevens Point Pointers.